Hey, what's up, guys? Hope you are doing well. Today we'll create this arrow swipe game, which also works fine with touch screens using HTML, CSS, and vanilla JavaScript. Game rules are simple blue color, we follow the direction of the arrow, red color, we unfollow. Hope you guys will enjoy the creation process and get some value out of it. So, without further ado, let's go. Alright, in order to avoid creating one very long video, I decided to break the project into four parts. In this part, we'll set the foundation starting from scratch, we'll create a first basic version of the game. In the second part, we'll add some animation to the arrow element as well as to the score element. In the third part, we'll add the progress bar countdown. And in the fourth part, we'll add the restart game button with the corresponding functionality. Cool, let's begin. Notice that I'm using the Visual Studio Code editor. For starters, let's create our files. For this simple project, everything will be in the same folder. So we have index.html, style.css, and main.js. In the index.html file, I type exclamation mark, says emmet abbreviation, hit tab or enter and we get some HTML5 boilerplate code to begin with. Title will be arrow swipe game and now let's link the external files to the document. The link to the style sheet will be included in the head and the link to the JavaScript file will will be included in the body right above the closing body tag. Nice, we will also make use of Fondosom icons in our project, so let's also include Fondosom. And we can now proceed to adding the game specific markup. But first, let's try and zoom in a bit. Okay, so first element will be a game container div. We can do this view to emmet. Of course, there will only be one game container in our project, so we could alternatively use an ID here instead of a class. Next comes the score span, which will be contained within a paragraph. The arrow element will be dynamically created using JavaScript. However, for now, let's just hard code it using an i tag with the classes of FAS, FA arrow circle. And let's say right. These two are Fondosom specific classes. And let's add one more class with the name of arrow. And I think that's all for now regarding the HTML markup. So let's open the project using the live server extension, which allows for live page reloading. So this is what we've created up to this point and now let's proceed to CSS styling. We first import the Roboto Mono Google font family, then reset the padding and margin to zero and box sizing to border box for all elements. We then set the font family background color and color for the body and let's proceed 
to game container which we want to occupy the entire viewport width and height and let's also align everything to the center and let's also give some padding okay now let's move on to the score element font size 50 pixels font weight bold and in order to make the score element unselectable we will make use of the user select property and set it to none these prefixes are for browser compatibility so now if we save the score element becomes unselectable okay let's move on to the arrow element margin top 20% of viewport height font size 200 pixels and let's set the cursor to default nice and let's see how it looks with our colors this is the red color and the blue one nice and finally let's just make a small modification for the case of smaller screens so if viewport width is less than 768 pixels the font size of the arrow element will be reduced to 180 pixels excellent let's move on to javascript so where do we start let's start simple by creating a narrow element and attaching it to the dom on page load so let's comment this out and on page load we will create a narrow element and append it to the parent element as the last child we will of course need to access the game container element so let's store it into a variable for easier access and in here goes a valid CSS selector next let's create the arrow element and append it to the parent element So we've created an I element, added the fondosome specific classes and the arrow class to the newly created element and appended as a child the new element to the game container, the parent element. So now if we save, we will get the arrow element. And in order to add the color, we will make use of the set attribute method over the newly created element style is the attribute we want to set and in here go the property value pairs we want to modify we want to modify the color with this value so now if we save we get the blue color 
we could alternatively achieve the same result this way new element dot style dot color and set the value of the color property like this so if we save we get the same result up to you okay now thinking a few steps ahead we know that after each correct swipe a new arrow element will have to be created so it would make sense to include this chunk of code into a function so let's do this Now, before adding the different arrow directions and colors and the randomness, I think we should better define and handle the swipe event. Of course, there is not a single event in JavaScript called swipe. However, we can detect the direction of the motion combining the mouse down and mouse up events for traditional screens or non touch screens and correspondingly the touch start and touch end events for touch screens okay let's add the event listeners over the game container element and the reason I chose to add the event listeners over the game container which occupies the entire viewport width and height is because although the swipe event should be initiated within the boundaries of the arrow element it could end at any point even beyond the boundaries of this element so here we are listening for a mouse down event over the game container and whenever there is a mouse down event we want to call the lock function we will implement this function in a bit the log function will also be called in the case of a touch start event and similarly in the case of a mouse up event or a touch end event the release function will be called we will also implement this function in a bit okay let's first define the log function and let's check that everything works as intended by logging the event dot target F12 to open the dev tools here is our console so if I click on the arrow element we get the arrow element if I click on the score element we get the score we get the game container okay everything works fine and um, we will also need to distinguish between the mouse down event and the touch start event and we will do this using the event dot type property so now on mouse down we get the type of the event we will also make use of the screen x and screen y properties in order to get the x and y coordinates of the point where the event occurred recall that x increases from left to right and y increases from top to bottom we first want to ensure that the event was initiated on an arrow element otherwise we ignore it so if not event dot target dot class list dot contains 
the class arrow then in this case just return just exit the function otherwise we want to capture and store the starting coordinates of the swipe movement but first let's define the starting and ending coordinates as global variables and now let's store the starting coordinates to the corresponding variables but first note that since in the case of touch screens we could have more than one point of contact in order to get for example the x uh, coordinate instead of just using event dot screen x we should rather use event dot changed touches uh, this is a list and we will always get the first element dot screen x so let's use a ternary operator in order to take into account the two different event types so if event dot type equals mouse down then in this case start x will be equal to event dot screen x otherwise it will be equal to this and similarly for the start y coordinate let's move on to implementing the release function things are quite similar now so let's copy paste the lock function replace start x with end x start y with end y and mouse down with mouse up however this part should only be executed if a swipe event was initiated otherwise just ignore the event and exit the function All right, and go to this by the way. Okay, so up to this point, we've managed to capture and store into global variables the starting and ending coordinates of the swipe movement, and we can therefore determine the direction and validate whether the swipe was correct or wrong very nice but let's first complete the arrow element creation process by randomly selecting direction and color before creating and attaching it to the DOM okay let's add the directions array here and store it in a variable called directions equals up and let's go clockwise right down and left the randomly selected direction will be stored in a variable called direction and the random color of the arrow will be defined by the is reverse direction boolean variable so if is reverse direction is true or one then the color will be red and if it is false or zero color will be blue so in next arrow function before creating the arrow element 
let's generate the values for direction and is reverse direction variables direction equals directions this is the array and we want a random index between 0 and 3 since there are four elements in total in the directions array so math dot random times 4 returns a random number between 0 included and 4 ex excluded and in order to round down this number to its nearest integer we should use math dot floor so this way we get an integer between 0 and 3 and although this works perfectly fine we could alternatively define a separate function which returns a random integer between 0 and an argument integer so let's implement the function here function get random int and it takes a parameter this should be an integer and this function will return a random integer in the range of 0 to max minus 1 so return and let's copy paste this part and all we have to do is replace 4 with max and now in order to get a random integer between 0 and 3 all we have to do is call the function get random int with 4 as an argument and similarly for the is reverse direction variable we only want a random integer between 0 and 1 0 stands for false and 1 for true so is reverse direction equals get random int 2 great and now let's add the direction and color to the newly created arrow element this is where direction should go so let's replace the double quotes with template literals this is the backtick by the way and not a single quote so here goes the expression and in our case the expression it's, is just the direction and for the color the expression will be a conditional or ternary operator so if is reverse direction is true then in this case we want the red color otherwise we want the blue one so let's save and test and indeed we can see that each time we refresh and therefore the next arrow function is called directions and colors are randomly generated and added to the arrow element now that we have the expected direction we can proceed to validating the arrow swipe and act accordingly maybe a more accurate name for this function would be handle swipe or even handle arrow swipe to be more precise since validation is just the first step and second step would be to act upon the validation results 
Nice, and let's start implementing the handle arrow swipe function. First step is validation. So let result be an empty string for starters. And after validation, result will either be correct or wrong or it will remain an empty string, neither correct nor wrong. And uh, when does this case occur? Well, if for example we expect a horizontal swipe and the player swipes vertically, then result will remain an empty string, it won't be correct or wrong. Now, if the player swipes diagonally, then result will always take a correct or wrong value since we will not add any sensitivity threshold thus making our game as sensitive as possible even the slightest one pixel movement will be enough to produce a result okay let's get the result so if direction equals up so if the expected direction is up but before proceeding there is something wrong here right so if is reverse direction is true then the expected direction is not up but down so let's replace this with a function the correct direction function and let's quickly implement this function over here If not is reverse direction, then in this case we just want to return the direction. Otherwise, we have to reverse the direction. So if direction equals up, then we want to return down. If direction equals right, then we want to return left. And you get the point. If direction is down, we return up. And if direction is left, we return right. Okay. If correct or expected direction is up we are interested in the vertical direction of the swipe movement which we can get by comparing the starting with the ending y coordinate so if end y is less than start y recall that y coordinate increases from top to bottom so if end is less than the start y then it means we had an upward movement so in this case result equals correct else If and y is greater than start y, well, in this case we swiped down and result is wrong. And if and y equals start y, in this case uh, we had a horizontal swipe or just a click or tap and result will remain an empty string before proceeding to the other directions let's quickly demonstrate how we could add a sensitivity threshold so we've set the sensitivity threshold to 10 pixels and this should probably be placed at the top as a global variable but doesn't really matter now 
and in order to ignore swipe movements below the sensitivity threshold over for example the vertical axis we could only proceed to evaluating the swipe movement if this condition is met if math.apps and y minus start y if this is greater than sensitivity threshold then in this case proceed to evaluating the swipe movement otherwise result will remain an empty string and swipe will practically be ignored okay let's continue with the other directions else if correct direction equals right if and x since we are interested in horizontal direction now if and x is greater than start x well in this case result equals correct else if and x is less than start x result is wrong swiped left and similarly we work for the other two directions down and left we are almost there all we have to do now is define how to handle the validation result but before proceeding since this function is getting too long let's include this validation code into a separate function and let's name the function get validation result paste the code here and this function will return the result nice and let's call the function here to get the result which we will store into a variable called result why not and we are good to go so if result equals correct in this case we want to increase the score remove the current arrow element and create the next one okay but i think we didn't define the score variable yet so let score equals zero and let's also store the score element object into a variable for easier access so const score element equals and i think the query selector for the score element is score let's check here it is okay So if player was correct, let's increase the score by 10. And obviously this is arbitrary, could be 1, 2, 5, 10, 100, 1000. I just like the number 10. And maybe a better practice would be to define this as a global variable at the beginning of this file. However, for this small project, 
let's leave it like this next we're going to update the text of score element to the new score so score element dot text content equals score next we want to remove the current arrow element and finally we want to create the next arrow element calling the next arrow function and that's all for the correct case now else if result is wrong well in this case we just want to decrease the score and because I prefer to prevent score from dropping below zero let's add this condition first if score is greater than zero so only in this case we will proceed to updating the score you can see how much I like number 10 but I meant zero here and let's copy paste this part and replace the plus sign with the minus sign now this works perfectly fine for our game score cannot become negative however what if for example we gave the player 5 points in the case of correct swipe and took from the player 10 points well in this case score could become negative so an alternative way to write this would be score equals and get the maximum value between 0 and score minus 10 now if result is an empty string we won't do anything we will just ignore the swipe and in any case we will have to reset the starting and ending swipe coordinates in order to be ready for the next swipe and I think that's all so let's check the result and let's open the console to see if we get any errors so now if I swipe left indeed score increases and a new arrow is created now let's make a mistake on purpose indeed score decreases and let's get to zero okay all right that was quite a lot but we did it starting from scratch we've created a first basic version of our game in the next part we will start making our game a bit more appealing by animating the arrow element as well as the score element okay guys that's all for now thanks for watching for any questions, suggestions or just to say hi, please use the comment section below. Also hit the like button if you liked this video. Don't forget to subscribe if you want more. Till next time, keep coding, keep improving and enjoy the journey. Take care. Bye.